Thanks very much, Nizam. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Breakfast Club. You're with me, Ben Ibrahim, and you're joining us for this week's segment of Healthy Living. And today, we're talking to Dr. Nora Shikin Mokta, founder of Prima Nora Medical Center and a gynecologist. And we're going to talk about, to all you aspiring mums and dads out there, on how to have a positive baby delivery using the cesarean technique. Dato or Dr. Nora, thank you very much for being with us. How are you? I'm great. It's a pleasure, Ben, to be with you. Oh, it's a pleasure to be with you. Oh, not everybody says that every day, but I'll you know, take my compliments where I can. But before we get into it, Dato, tell Thanks, us a bit ben. about yourself. You know, how long have you been practicing the medical practitioner's call? How long have you been doing this job? And yeah, tell us about yourself, really. Well, I've been practicing for about a quarter century now. I should say. You still look great, I have to admit. What's your <laughs> secret? You Please share much. with us. Okay, that would be another day. Another day, another <laughs> session. Another session, with, with yeah. With Dr. Nora, yeah. Right. Um, I'm a gynecologist and um, practicing now having my own medical center, Primera Medical Centers. It's an outpatient, one-stop healthcare center for women looking after the healthcare needs of the woman throughout the ages, literally from womb to tomb. Mm -hmm. Womb to tomb. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. For diagnosis, disease management, wellness maintenance, healthy aging, and also aesthetics. Okay. Non-invasive. Yeah. without surgery so that's an option for the woman. Now Dr. Nora I know many people out there many aspiring doctors look at you as a role model you're very visible in the media we love your articles all the time in the Star newspaper and Star Health. Thank but you. But why gynecology in particular I mean out of all the medical disciplines that you could have specialized in why that more that specialization? Um, it's actually fulfilled my purpose in life right. and that is just actually to serve the woman right. and I find uh, no greater pleasure than to serve the woman because I think I understand women better coming from where, where I come from, mm -hmm. literally going through the ages and also the challenges from childhood, literally I mean growing up with my women yeah. and um, I would see that I'm also very comfortable with them and yeah. also do have um, sympathize with them and that will be my lifelong mission to actually uplift the quality of women's health. Okay great, great, yeah. very inspirational indeed. Now Dr. Nora, we're talking about how to have a positive baby delivery using the cesarean technique. Now before we get into the cesarean mm -hmm. technique area, now you see a lot of patients every day and I'm sure many Definitely. females say to you, Dr. Nora, I want to do natural birth, should I do cesarean? So what are the pros and cons so to speak? Well, first understand that um, is it major surgery or versus mother nature? Mm -hmm. Okay, so vaginal delivery has been known traditionally through the vagina and cesarean delivery means um, delivering a baby through the abdomen, having um, straight incision just above the pubic bone, mm -hmm. at the bikini line, right. and uh, usually resulting in a nearly invisible scar at the end of the day. An invisible scar, yeah, because many yes. people think that if I have that surgery, that C-section surgery, I'm going to be scarred for life, basically, but well, nobody can see it. But yes, you can have a scar, but you can hide it with a bikini unless you mm. want to go, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, you see. Yeah. So, um, and actually, when it comes to birth choices, it's the woman's right. right. And as long as it doesn't go against medical ethics, I mean, there is a caveat that if you want to go for, say, caesarean delivery, um, of course, no doctor would ethically uh, have your baby out before term. Of course. And that would mean like 38 complete weeks, you see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, having said that, you see, because there's still this minority of women who says, oh, I want natural childbirth, I want pain-free delivery, yeah. or I want to uh, deliver my baby underwater, okay? Really? Um, yes, they wow. have the water birth. Yeah. And then this minority says, I want to have an elective caesarean delivery. Mm. So, this is where, when it comes to women's rights, we have to respect the choices as again saying, you know, um, where in some areas uh, we do have to be, um, we have to temper some uh, some medical judgments here against so-called evidence-based medicine. Because everybody's medicine, different, yeah. yeah, in terms yeah. of their body, their health, how fit they are, you know, the number of vitamins they're taking, their lifestyle, right? You know, and also. Uh, what is it that they want in life, you see. So when we look at um, cesarean section, there are a lot of negative things being said about that. And, this negative and stereotypes, yeah? Yes. I mean, people, the society are quick to give medals to those uh, women DIY vaginal delivery. Yeah, yeah, great. You know, you had vaginal delivery. And maybe give a lot of disparaging comments on women who opt for cesarean sections. Oh, they're too posh to push, you know. So yeah. that's why they're having cesarean. But you have to look at each woman's life individually. Exactly. And exactly. their needs. You can't you stereotype. Right, you see because again it's an option because again when you talk about what are the pros and cons of caesarean section um, 
um, given uh, be the the, the health care uh, that she's receiving, see, particularly I'm talking about in private practice, and this woman perhaps she has an option to zero delivery, I can time it, I can schedule it, my husband will be around, otherwise he's outstationed. <laughs> That's right. God knows when, but maybe might pop up, nobody might be there, you see. And and she is might be of, uh, have decided that you know, in, in my family or, or my future, I only want maybe two, three, or maybe just one child. And I want family planning this, comes yes, into it, yes. So called the safest delivery, the, the um, and where my family support will be there, and I'm prepared. Right. See, and I have the choice of going to this hospital to have this doctor to deliver for me. So all this does come into play, and we has doctors will have to look at her and say, look, um, if you do go through vaginal delivery, these are the um, the. Uh, outcomes and so is cesarean. And these are the factors that, that you have to take yes, in. Yes, okay. So, yeah, I mean, when you talk about cesarean deliveries, and if you compare it, if, if for a woman who is prepared, particularly in private practice, mm -hmm. they are women who has received very good health care. Of course. All right. So, um, and a lot of the studies that are done, I would say they're quite, um, I would say flawed, but quite skewed, you see, because when you make comparison about the um, the negative things you hear about uh, caesarean deliveries that, you know, um, higher morbidities or great risk of uh, complications to the mom, this is because more, more or less we're talking more on those that uh, when they do those studies are more in training hospitals where you have emergency coming up from women from rural areas, uh, indigenous, indigenous groups, you know, who never had any, or uh, immigrants who yeah, never had true, any medical true. checkup, have got a lot of diseases. Poor medical before. history, basically. Yes, yeah. you see, so that's why when we had to do an emergency caesarean, they end up having lots of complications. Mm -hmm. But someone who's well looked after right from the beginning, good um, antenatal care, have made this decision. The um, risk, I would say, or the safety is almost the same as vaginal delivery, and not necessarily vaginal delivery only safe, yeah. and not necessarily all caesarean deliveries have got its morbidity. So everything see? does have pros and cons. Yes, it does, yeah. you see. So again, and you look at women's lifespan now. We're living in 70s, 80s, and even up to 120. <laughs> yes, darling, we can live up to 120, yes, okay? I, we read that right. in the paper today, yes. Yes, you see. So uh, look at, uh, uh, that's how women has evolved, but previously, uh, we don't, uh, we hardly live live beyond the menopause. Women would die from childbirth or die from infections. But even with the live beyond 70s and 80s, we have challenges as we age, mm. weakening of our support tissues, of our ligaments, you know, mm. uh, increased risk of prolapse. And when you have a vaginal delivery, literally, it's actually it's like a freight train really <laughs> going train. through the vagina. Yeah. So that does have some implications, particularly if you have repeated pregnancies deliveries through the vagina. Right. So it has in some ways caused some weakening to your support structures. And as you age, that's when you have risk of either urine incontinence or even fecal incontinence. And th this is uh, the pros and cons that the women yeah. have to actually wow. weigh themselves. I'm learning a lot here. And yes. I'm yeah, learning see? a lot, a lot. But Dr. Nora, you said earlier um, in your, when I answered my question that you said that there's a lot of stereotypes out there. And as a first-class medical practitioner, is there any stereotypes that you want to squash right here on The Breakfast Club? You know, when people say, oh, you, you know, you're a champion, you did it naturally. Oh, you're, you know, you're too soft to push out because you, because you did C-section. So is there any stereotypes? Because like you said, everybody is different. And I'm sure when someone comes up to you, you just go, Oh, not again, you know. So here's the stereotype again, and I'm sure you want to bring out, you know, a tape recorder or a book sometimes just to sort of repeat yourself. But any stereotypes that you do want to quash right here on The Breakfast Club about both births? No, I don't want to squash my woman. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say that we should not be too judgmental. So and that's your best advice, Yes, yeah? my best advice is see, because there's always two sides to a story, and mm -hmm. you should have both sides before you actually make a fair, I would say, an opinion to say, no, this is right or this is wrong, because sometimes there are no right or wrong answers. Both might be right. Right. Okay? Right. So this is where, of course, for some women, it's straightforward. No, you can't have vaginal deliveries. Mm -hmm. These are in conditions where the mother has got a placenta that is blocking the passage of the baby. We call right. it placenta previa. Or she has previous, previous caesarean sections. Yeah. Or she has other underlying medical diseases like diabetes, hypertension. Yeah. Or in this pregnancy... Diabetes is getting quite prevalent now, yeah? Yeah, well, that's our society. Yeah. All right, the price that we have to pay. Um, again, or if there is some abnormalities in the pregnancy, cell where the baby has got an abnormal lie instead of where the head is down you know it's either uh, it's like we call it transverse position mm -hmm. or you have multiple pregnancies outcomes mm -hmm. so in this condition 
sorry, non-negotiable, because we're talking about safety. That would be still the top priority for the mom. Uh -huh. um, other conditions is still where, of course, when the, when the woman wants to come for a caesarean, says, okay, sure, I'll do it. You know? No, but you, we, ethically, we have to counsel the woman. Counsels. Why, you know, have you thought about the pros and cons to it? Because if she's not prepared psycho psychologically as well. Mm -hmm. The mental preparation, yes. yeah mental preparation as well it can also be quite traumatic that's right okay so these are the uh, I, would, I would say uh, where you have to see a woman individually understand why she's having it why she thinks it's best and and also explain to her about you know if you go to cesarean yes these are the things that you might expect like you know uh, a bit more blood loss you get you need a bit, a bit more longer uh, recovery time do you have the support there you know and uh, are you prepared to it, uh, for it in the sense that you know we have to look at the medical conditions in terms of whether she's got enough hemoglobin level, her blood groups, and all these issues have to be sort of uh, addressed. addressed to her, put on the table, this is the pros, this is the cons, and then at the end, we have doc as doctors can only give you directions. We can't make that decision for you, right. okay? Because theoretically it's still, uh, yeah, I mean, I, mean it's, it's, I would say, we can say, okay, this is the right choice for you, but still, it's you that makes it's the decision. It's your call, yeah? Yes, it is it's, it's the a individual's call. It anyway, on that note, hold your horses there, Dr. Nora, before we go further. This has been a great start to a great interview to an interesting topic for all you aspiring mums and dads out there. We're just going to take a very short commercial break right here on The Breakfast Club, but when we come back, more with Dr. Nora on healthy living. We'll see you soon.